like to also thank all of you for being here tonight and taking an interest in what the candidates have to say. I'd like to thank the Star News and the radio station for putting this on and for Ann Harris because I'm sure she arranged the room. <laughs> um, my name is Christy Tulusky and I grew up on a dairy farm in Abbotsford. I, after I graduated from Abbotsford High School, I went to Winona State University where I graduated um, I earning, earning a bachelor's degree in paralegal studies there. While I was attending Winona State University, I completed an internship with the district attorney's office here in Taylor County. And eventually I was offered a position as a paralegal in the district attorney's office. Uh, I worked in the DA's office for a total of about six years. And during that time I performed a wide variety of duties, uh, ranging from conducting legal research, drafting all sorts of legal documents and working closely with law enforcement. Then in 2002, after my youngest son was born, I decided to pursue a dream, and that was to go back to law school and earn my degree. Um, a friend of mine had informed me that Hamlin University School of Law had developed a weekend program, and the classes would be all day Saturdays and all day Sundays. It would take four years to complete the program. I applied and was accepted and for four school years. I traveled back and forth from Medford to St. Paul and went through the weekend program successfully. During the week, um, I had to balance homework, which as Mr. Kells will tell you, law school is no easy task, uh, with raising two young kids who were both under the, the age of three. Uh, <clears throat> I say this because it, it was incredibly difficult and intense to go through that process, but I succeeded due to the hard work and determination that I had within myself, and also most importantly because of the support of my husband and the rest of my family. In 2007, I graduated from Hamlin University School of Law. I passed the bar exam, and I was offered employment with Schmitty Law Office here in Medford. So for the past five years, I've been working as an attorney here at Schmitty Law Office. Initially, I began by doing mostly family law, um, but I also um, did the work as the city attorney for, for Medford, and most of that work consisted of prosecuting the city citations that were issued by Medford Police Department officers um, and people who were contesting those in the court process. Uh, for the past two and a half years, I've been completely busy with the Com Taylor County Corporation Council contract which means that I do the civil work for the county, and my partner and I divide that work up in a manner so that he does the general legal work, and I do the bulk of the litigation for Taylor County Human Services and for child support. So what I do for human services is uh, mental commitments, guardianships, protective placements, children in need of protective services cases, uh, and as I mentioned, I do the child support enforcement as well. On a personal note, my husband is Chuck. We've been married for 15 years. We've lived in Medford that entire time. Uh, we are both committed to this community. We made a choice to remain in this community while I drove back and forth for four years to St. Paul to earn my degree. Uh, we chose to stay here to be with our family and to be involved in this community. And I'm honored for the opportunity to serve in any capacity that you want me to be. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I too like to thank Brian and Paula for coming down here and hosting us tonight, Star News on the radio station. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been your district attorney for the past 10 years. Uh, prior to that, I was an assistant district attorney in Marathon County for about three years. I'm a veteran of the United States Army. I'm a, for, uh, a former law enforcement officer uh, in the southern part of the state. <clears throat> I too am married. My wife Nancy is here tonight with me. Uh, my oldest daughter, Michaela, she's 13. She's here. Our youngest isn't interested in politics, and she's probably the smartest out of all of us. <laughs> but that being said, uh, I'm running for re-election mainly because 10 years ago I, I made a promise when I came here. Three things. One, to hold criminals accountable. Two, to treat everyone fairly. And three, to serve justice. And my track record, my track record shows I've done just that. And I want to continue 
and that promise to Taylor County. When I came into office 10 years ago, criminals were not being convicted at jury trial. The wrong people were being prosecuted. The right people were not being prosecuted. My experience makes me a qualified candidate in this race. The position of district attorney is a highly specialized and unique position. And you can only get that experience by actually doing it. I am the only candidate with actual, real, criminal prosecution experience. And through the efforts of law enforcement and my office, we continue to protect Taylor County by holding the line on crime, such as methamphetamine lamps, child sexual assaults, arsons, and hundreds of other crimes that the Sheriff's Office and City Police Departments and I do every day to keep Taylor County safe. I'm endorsed by the Wisconsin Attorney General, J.B. Van Hollen, former Sheriff Don Wright, former Sheriff Jack Kay, local officials, prosecutors throughout the state. They know that real experience does count, and I ask for your vote November 6th. Thank you. several, but the big one is there's a very big difference between civil law and criminal law. Now, my opponent's a fine civil attorney. I have no qualms with that. I know her. She works in the county courthouse. But civil law and criminal law is very different. First and foremost, the burden of proof. When you, when you deal with criminal law, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. It's our highest legal standard we have in the system. And the only way you can deal with a burden so high is you actually have to conduct jury trials. You have to have the experience of going before a jury of Taylor County citizens presenting your case. And you can only do that by, by actually doing it. You have to come in with that experience. You have to be able to, it's not just a matter of asking the right question, it's also the matter of knowing what questions not to ask. How to prepare your witnesses, be it doctors or lay people or uh, police officers, how to prepare them for court. And then how we go in front of 12 people and put all that together. And there's no way you can't learn that out of a book. You can't read that on the internet and figure it out. The only way you get that experience is doing it. Thank you very much. Uh, Christy, uh, I'll ask you the same question. Uh, experience has been highlighted as an issue in this campaign. What specific experience do you feel will be the most valuable to you should you be elected? Um, I can see that there are differences between the civil citations that I prosecute and the criminal cases that Mr. Pels prosecutes. Um, the, the burden of proof, automatic right to jury trial, things like that. However, there are a lot of similarities, so I would say that um, my experience as a city attorney um, is relevant. Um, you know, the citations that I prosecute are for disorderly conduct, uh, issuance of worthless check, battery, theft. They have the same elements that those the, the equivalent criminal charges have. Um, I operate with the same evidence that there would be available in a criminal case. I have the same rules of presenting that evidence in a courtroom. And I have the same legal issues that Mr. Kells deals with. So um, there are differences, but there are also a lot of similarities. I have the experience in the courtroom. I do bench trials on a regular basis. Uh, more importantly, I deal with the defendants on a regular basis and with law enforcement on a regular basis. And I think it's my relationships that really set me apart. I'm able to work cooperatively with people, uh, resolve things. And even when I disagree with, this event, with defendants, um, I explain to them that they have a right to go into court and contest it. I we have no issues with uh, not being able to re resolve it by uh, 
some sort of a plea agreement. If we disagree, uh, they always know they have the right to go to the trial, and um, I respect them for that. How would you rate your accessibility in relation to law enforcement, human services, and the public? Um, <laughs> I'm accessible to human services on a probably a minute-by-minute -minute basis. Uh, over the past two and a half years, as I indicated, I've been serving as corporation counsel. Um, and I, as I said, I haven't had much time to do much else because when emergencies arise in human services, they need me immediately, and I respond immediately. Um, law enforcement, same thing. Uh, I work with the Medford Police Department very closely as a city attorney. I work with the Sheriff's Department on things, um, usually involving uh, issues related to human services cases. And I work very well with them and I respond very quickly and promptly to them. Um, the public as well. Um, I have no problem with people calling me at the office and discussing concerns or issues with me, I return those issues, those uh, phone calls if I'm out of the office promptly. Carol, sorry. sorry. Oh, do you want me to read it? Sure. <laughs> you just want me to put these on. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, how how would you rate your accessibility in relation to law enforcement, human services, and the public? Well, I'll start with law enforcement because I see our sheriff to my, my left there, and I know I've spent the last 10 years receiving calls from Sheriff Daniels or Sheriff K or Chief Beaver or Chief Coyer from time 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, usually waking me up, and my wife, she's nodding her head. Um, and that's part of the role of the district attorney. You have to be available on call. There is no assistant district attorney in Taylor County. The district attorney is the sole prosecutor for all the criminal actions, so you have to make yourself available. I've spoken to either the sheriff or any of his people many times. I, so many I can't even count over the years. Uh, same goes for human services. Human services usually don't call me in the middle of the night. It's usually just law enforcement. Um, and then I get the uh, non-fun task of usually waking up the judge once I hear from law enforcement. Um, and, and, and as to the public, the same thing. Uh, we have public come up all the time. It's a public office, it's a public building. Sometimes people have questions, they don't know which office to go to, and my office and myself have always made ourselves available to assist them. Sometimes they think it's, it's a DA issue. It's not, it might be a law enforcement issue. It might be a register of deeds issue. They don't, they sometimes aren't familiar. Um, and that's part of the job. That's what we get paid to do, to make ourselves available to citizens, law enforcement, human services, any other agency, I have health department come up here so often, and uh, they didn't break the list in here. Thank you. Okay, uh, next question is, uh, Carl, what do you what do you view as the role of the district attorney in relation to other parts of the criminal justice system, uh, especially in regard to making charging or uh, uh, plea agreement uh, uh, decisions? Well, the role, the DA is kind of, in a lot of ways, kind of like the gatekeeper of the criminal justice system. Law enforcement goes out and they, they do their investigations, and they work really hard. We're lucky, we're very fortunate here in this county, we have highly trained and skilled law enforcement officers, men and women, who go out and do a good job day or night, 24 hours a day. So that's only, that's only one step of the job. And they bring me all the reports, the evidence, we talk about it, I have to review the cases. And then you have to look at, well, are the elements of the crime being met? Can you prove it? And not only just going to court and saying, yeah, it's probably likely he did it, you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt that the person committed the crime. So as a DA, that's where you're the gatekeeper, because the moment you sign your name on a criminal complaint, you have entered somebody into the criminal system. That means you're charged with a crime, for example. So it, it's an important role, and you have to keep lines of communication open, and frankly, and it's not just law enforcement, sometimes with human services and other agencies as well, but I use law enforcement because I would say probably 95% of all referrals come from the sheriff or the chiefs from the different departments. But the important part is you have to have lines of communication open because often cases need follow-up investigation. Cases need additional evidence being secured. 
sometimes law enforcement will just come to my office, hey, I want to run a case by you. What do you think? It's not ready to be referred. And I, and I act as their legal advisor. Well, you're missing this. Well, you should probably ask this question or maybe look at this. And in all the years, frankly, our law enforcement does pretty good at follow-up. Usually within a day or two, they get right on it. Um, and that's important. You've got to keep those lines of communication open. Christy, ask you the same question. Uh, what do you view as the role of the district attorney in relation to the other parts of the criminal justice system, especially in regard to making charging or plea agreement decisions? Well, I, I think um, specifically um, the issue should be looking at what the ultimate goal of each case is. That's important at the charging stage as well as the plea agreement stage. Um, I should note that a lot of people hear the word plea agreement and they think it's a bad phrase. Um, Mr. Kells and I I'm sure would agree with me that it's a necessary part of the system. There's no way that anybody could take every single case to trial, nor would it be efficient to do so. That would be very costly. Um, and it also, uh, if you can get the same result with a plea agreement that you would add a successful jury trial, you're, you're going to save money, you're going to save victims and witnesses from having to go through additional trauma. Um, so back to my original point is that you need to look at what the ultimate goal is of the case. It may be simply punishment um, and incarceration for serious cases like um, sexual assault, um, methamphetamine manufacturing, things like that. Um, but I strongly believe also that we as uh, prosecutors have a duty to investigate other alternatives. Right now the trend in the court system is to look for more problem-solving um, methods, uh, problem-solving courts to resolve these cases. So for instance, OWI courts are a new up-and-coming thing. I think that it would be very helpful to have that in Taylor County. Um, also, diversion programs would be very helpful to have. Marathon County has a diversion program. Um, it's set up basically so that uh, low-risk, first-time offenders would have the opportunity to satisfy certain conditions and thereby avoid perhaps uh, a criminal conviction or even having a criminal charge show up on CCAP uh, with um, the introduction of records being available online it's very important not to charge somebody with a crime um, unless you have the evidence as Mr. Cole said.